Please help me welcome Donald Yakma. I'm happy to be with you. I appreciate very much Guru Focus and Charlie inviting me here. I feel honored to be here. And uh, this is another way of, of maybe putting uh, emphasis on what we try to do. And that is, we like to buy beach balls being pushed underwater with the water level rising. And so tonight what I want to do is, is uh, tell you about our process and, the, and the basically coming in maybe from the 30,000 foot level uh, and talking about the process and, and uh, creating a framework that I think is a very uh, rational framework in which to evaluate uh, stocks, and by the way, whether it's a stock or a bond or a building, I think this process allows one to, to do that when you look at them as though they were bonds. It, to me, it's a very rational process, and, and uh, just a, it's a great allocator of capital. And, and let me, uh, maybe I get this out of the way real quickly, um, my one political comment or, or economic comment. I'm always bothered because I see so many times where politics overrides economics in our society. And it's not that free enterprise does everything right or government does everything wrong, but on average, I am convinced that free enterprise does a better job at capital allocation than running money through the central governments or any of the government's entities. Seems to me there are really two very, very important investment goals that one should have in this business. The first one is to protect our money. And the first part of that is to protect it against the permanent loss of capital, not fluctuations in prices necessarily, but buying things at good prices so that, so that you aren't permanently going to uh, suffer a, a permanent loss of your capital, protecting it. Now, in theory, one could say, well, I'll just put it under my mattress and accomplish that goal. But the other part of the problem is, is in a papered society, and we're in a world where I don't see that changing, uh, inflation seems to me to be inevitable. And we know the Fed's talked about 2% inflation being their goal. Using the rule of 72, 2% inflation will take a dollar to a quarter over 72 years. So it doesn't sound like much, but it adds up over time. And so one needs to protect by being proactive and doing something with the capital in a proactive way to protect against losses as well. The second thing is to grow capital. And uh, we have kind of the absolute and relative goal, if you will. The first one is to make sure we earn double digits. If you, those of you who, uh, who studied anything in, uh, in security analysis know that basically you're looking at uh, in, in, over, a, over a long period of time, and this is when inflation's been probably closer to 3%, that, fix, or that uh, treasuries or very short-term things basically offset inflation. Uh, bonds generate about 3% real and stocks about 6% real. So if you add inflation, you get really more like 3, 6, 10, historically with equities being 10. So 10, I think, is a reasonable goal uh, on, on that. The second thing is to, to measure it over the, I think the most effective time period to measure a money manager is from one market peak to the next market peak. That covers the whole cycle. I think that's the best starting point to use. Um, but again, maybe I'm biased because of being a so-called value manager, although I've yet to see anybody claim to, to buy overpriced stocks. Uh, it's just that they have different methodologies of how they evaluate uh, uh, value. Now we're going to talk about three major aspects of investing. One is the business model, and the second one is, is the reinvestment process or shareholder-oriented manager. That's because when you think about it, uh, when you buy a business, you, most businesses will pay you a dividend. You reinvest that, but the bulk of the cash is reinvested in our behalf by the manager. And the third thing is the low purchase price. Investment. Well, as I said, whether it's a bond or building, a stock, anything that generates cash, this won't work for art or something like that. Um, basically, it's a matter of looking at future cash flows and making judgment calls on it. And the, the more the predictability is of those cash flows, the narrower the band will be of predictions going out. But stocks really ought to be in the same category as 30-year bonds because they have a very long life. 
And it's, nobody is perfect, nobody can predict the future. So we, we all use to some degree certain shortcuts or certain estimates looking out into the future.